Good morning. Hello. Welcome. We are having a great time this morning and are really excited about today's episode. Yeah, we are. We're talking about how to keep New Year's resolutions. This was a topic suggested to us by one of our listeners and we thought it was a good idea. This was suggested to us by Chancellor DeWind. Okay, you don't need to say the last name. But... Oh, well, I, okay, sorry. What do I do now? You can't really talk it back once you've said their last name. Anybody can go out there and find them, so. Oh. <sighs> nice job. I, I'm sorry. Way to protect the say, innocent, Lysandra Osterkamp. Yeah, you say my last name <laughs> all the time. <laughs> all right. So, going to be talking about that. What, oh. is, what is today's date? Today is January 11th. 11th. Oh, it's your brother's birthday. Brother's birthday. His name is Christopher Osterkamp. (laughs) Look him up. It's his birthday. Go tell him happy birthday. So, happy birthday, bro. I will be eating 10 slices of cake for you today. That's nice. Uh, We're going to talk a little bit about eating cake today. (laughs) You're going to regret saying that. No, because the saying is, let them eat cake. Mm -hmm. Okay. The saying's not, let them not eat cake. Okay, but we're all going to be judging you. But you can't have your cake and eat it too. So, which you got to figure out which analogy you're going with. I think you got too many out there. Are you going to have your cake and eat it too, or are you going to let them eat cake? So that's that's really the choice for this resolution. Is which one are you going to do? You're so weird. I I like. So which which one is it? I don't even, I can't even talk to you. I have no idea what you're saying. Well, you're good, not making any sense. Good thing you don't have to sit here for another 45 minutes and talk to me. It's yeah. the one reason I love this podcast, because for 45 <laughs> minutes, she's forced to sit down and actually talk to me. I'm stuck. And well, communicate. Yeah, you, you, you are not the talker, but you, you want me you, to sit. You. All right. <laughs> This is going to be a bad day. I can just like I just tell. feel like this is going to be one of our best episodes <laughs> I ever. can tell this is going to be a ridiculous episode. <clears throat> Listen, people want good content. They don't want goofy craziness. So I know. I am, I am walking good content. Keep it in check. Actually, I'm sitting down good content, but you yes. know what I mean. Okay. All right. Are you ready? Are we doing this? Gather around, everybody. It's time for a family meeting. The family meeting is a show that's all about family relationships. Where are the Oster Camps? I'm Thomas. This is my wife, Cake. Hello, and welcome to our family. <laughs> welcome to episode 120 of the Family Meeting Podcast. On today's episode, we're going to talk about a topic suggested by uh, one of our listeners. Who was it? Chancellor. Nice. Yeah. Thanks, Chancellor. Yeah. Appreciate your input into the show. We sure do. And so because of this uh, suggestion that he gave us, we're going to be talking about keeping those New Year's resolutions. Oh, so, boy. Yeah, because it's January 11th. Some of us have already failed on our resolutions, but yeah. it's only January 11th. So guess what? Today's a great day to restart. That's right. It's Instead like of January 1, it's January 1-1. One, one. One. Like so you it. start again. Yep. This is your new start. All right. So how are you doing with your news, your New Year's resolutions and what goals did you make this year? Let's talk about that a little bit. Thomas. Yes. Tell all of our listeners, all of our YouTube viewers, what New Year's resolutions and goals did you set this year? And let me just warn everyone. I feel a sneeze coming on. So okay. somewhere along the way, I think I'm going to. Nope. See, if you say that you're going to sneeze, then you won't. Now the whole episode, everybody's waiting for you to sneeze. Yes, sitting on their end of the edge, for edge of their chair. That. You're welcome. So uh, one of my goals or resolutions, whatever terminology you want to use, is to lose about 15 pounds. Okay. So why was your voice so high there? You're like, okay. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out if you don't think I can do it or if you're like, only 15? <laughs> <laughs> Neither. Absolutely neither, babe. You can absolutely do it, and you don't need to lose more than 15. Okay. So I do need to lose 15. No, I said you don't need to lose more than 15. Yeah. That implies lose 15, babe. Here's what I want to say right now. I need to lose 15 pounds. Yeah, right. Okay. You need to so... gain 15 pounds. But I'm down I'm down two pounds today, officially. Good job. Good job. So I'm well on my way. That's excellent, and that's something to be celebrated. Um, so I'm going to celebrate by having birthday cake today because it's my brother's birthday 
and put those two pounds right back on. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Looks like you'll be starting afresh tomorrow. <laughs> yep. January 12th is a great time to restart your resolution. So, um, great. and then one of the things I'm really working on this year, <clears throat> is a goal of mine is to get into the Bible before I do anything else on my phone. So often what I would do is wake up, see that you're not there, and then, because you're out running or whatever, whatever you're doing, <laughs> and then uh, I'd, I'd grab my phone and see the notifications and kind of get lost in notifications, Facebook and whatever else. So I'm actively working to open the Bible app first and spend some time having my devotions. I love that. Uh, goal resolution. I really respect it and appreciate it. That's so awesome. far, I'm doing well. Good. So, so far, I'm at all 11 days this year. Babe, high row. five. Yeah. Nicely done. I love it. Um, so my New Year's resolutions and goals and stuff actually started the day after Christmas. They started December 26th because at Christmas time and the week leading up to Christmas, I was like, my life is falling apart. <laughs> everything's terrible i'm getting so fat i'm not working out i was like super upset with myself leading up to christmas so i decided my new year's would begin december 26th and we we talked about this a little bit at the end of last episode i can't remember if um, it was on on the video or if it was on the actual podcast i think it was on the podcast because you shamed me i just called you out that's that's part yeah of, we're going to be talking about having an accountability partner so <laughs> You just need somebody to hold you accountable. Yeah. On a podcast where everybody's listening. Literally January 1st. And <laughs> that was January 1st. I had started on the 26th. So I feel like people need to understand that I had several days where I did very well. Three to be exact. <laughs> <laughs> three. Okay. So let's I had see. three good days. 26. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So you had the 27th, 28th, 29th. Yep. What happened on the 30th and 31st? Um, I met with my amazing neighbor, Shelly. Yeah. And I brought out a plate of peanut butter balls for her. Mm. And then I was like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> if I have just one with Shelly, it's a social peanut butter ball. <laughs> it's it's going to be okay. This is not creating a habit. And it tanked me. It totally tanked me. After she left, I think I ate another four. And they're, they're so bad for you. And I, I really... I there is the there is a lot of protein in there. Yes, peanut butter peanut is butter. very good for you. And chocolate has, what do they say chocolate has? I can't even remember now. Sugar. Yeah, but there's something that is good about chocolate, and I can't remember right now what it is. It's probably mm. not good for your memory. Yeah, I don't makes you feel again. good. <laughs> yes. So anyway, um, I, I still have been doing much, much better than before Christmas. And I really, my ultimate resolution, like the realistic one, is live healthier live healthier so i am i've been running i've been doing my lunges my crunches my push-ups and squats and all that kind of stuff and i've been very consistent with that i'm really excited about it i'm feeling good about it um you look amazing <laughs> sorry i mean thank you um so uh so yeah that's kind of where i'm at but but i also have some other goals um i like what um, you want to share share some of them with them because yeah uh openness and publicizing your goals and your resolution is is a, one of those things that helps us to keep them i agree with that <clears throat> there's your first tip in this episode publicize your goals so that it'll help you keep them um so so living healthy but then more of a professional slash spiritual goal is uh to write at least one book but really i'd like to write two books this year Okay. So that's where I'm at with that. And you're going to give us like a, like a teaser. What are you writing? Yeah. So the first book that I'm writing and I'm already working on it and, um, and I'm into it, which is really exciting is a book called happily never after Ooh. about marriage. Five I, like, ways, I like the sound of that. Five ways to destroy your fairy tale and five ways to create your fairy tale. Okay. Yeah. So um, I'm already I'm already two chapters in and really enjoying the writing of it. I love to write. I just um, it's it takes discipline to find time to, to write when you have the kind of life that we have. I, th I think it takes discipline for anyone to do anything. But um, 
And, and what's, what's the second one? The second one I'd really like to do is Love Like Jesus, which I started a long time ago and had to purposefully put on the back burner to deal with the other stuff that I had going on in our lives at that time. That was when we were transi- transitioning to Florida and stuff. But um, you know what? Sometimes you don't last real long in your New Year's resolutions. Your goals don't last for very long, and it can be really frustrating. But here's the encouragement we want to give to you right at the beginning of this episode is it's not too late, okay? So we want to encourage you not to wait until next year to try that New Year's resolution. It's January 11th. Don't be like, well, I failed and I ate a treat, so um, I will eat treats until 2023 and then I'll try again. Don't do that. Tomorrow you can restart that New Year's resolution. Maybe it's to quit smoking and you already had a cigarette this month. That's okay. Start again. Try again. Don't give up. You can always, um, you know, start a clean slate. It's every day is a fresh start. So get back up and try again. Anything you do is better than nothing at all. Well, and we're going to be talking about some different tips here on how to keep those resolutions. And one of the ways to do that is just to write it out as specifically as possible. So whether it's a a health change that you want to make, what what is the change you want to make? Write it out. Um, whether it is, you know what, I'm not going to eat any snack food. Mm, that's good. For the month of January. All right. Well, write that specifically out. And then I would encourage you to post that on your cupboard or your fridge or wherever you like to get into the snacks. But, um, making it as specific as possible. And you can do this on your phone or on paper, or whatever it is you prefer, somewhere that you'll you'll see it often and be reminded often. But writing out those resolutions, writing out those goals that you have for the year will help you to keep it. And then you can go back to where you wrote it down and just be reminded of exactly what you set as your goal. What is it you want to accomplish or do? This is really important in my life because I tend to set goals and then a couple days later I'm like, no, I don't think that's actually what I said. I would do, I think it was really this, and that this has happened to me before with the area of eating, where I'm like, I'm going to make a goal, and I even, I even make it a matter of prayer, and, you know, ask the Holy Spirit to help me. Um, I am going to not snack throughout the day. I'm just going to have my coffee for the morning. I'm going to have a healthy lunch and a healthy supper. No nighttime bedtime snacks, no afternoon, I'm feeling sluggish snacks, and I would make that my goal... And then about three days later, maybe a week later, depending on how well I was doing, um, I would get to the point where I'm like, well, I think I, I think I only said I didn't want to snack at night. I think that's what it was. And it is funny because the Bible says that we can deceive ourselves. Oh yeah. And so keep that in mind that you have the ability to deceive yourself just like I do. (laughs) And so if we write it down, then you can't really deceive yourself. It's right there on paper or digitally on your phone. Well, and we've been talking a little bit about snacks and food and stuff, and it brought to mind something that I, something that I read somewhere. I don't remember where it was, but to kind of help out with this um, issue, whether you want to lose weight or whatever, for a lot of people, that's one of the goals they have for their New Year's resolution. But they suggested, and I think this could work, you just have to actually follow through with it is to take the most unflattering photo of yourself. Mm. Um, and so take the most unflattering photo of yourself and put it where, wherever, whether it's the fridge, whether it's, hey, in the pantry, where, where we'll keep the potato chips. Like, have the picture right there so that you have to look at it every time cool. you're going to go to get in the fridge or every time you're going to go to your secret snack drawer where you've got your Milano cookies hidden so the kids won't find them. This is like a torture, it sounds like. But it's a visual re- reminder yeah. that, hey, I'm not happy with the way that I look or the way that I feel, and this behavior is damaging to me. This behavior is what's causing this, mm-hmm. and so it's, it's a deterrent. Right, right. Great idea. But uh, so for me, I know that I have to write down what my goals are and what what is the healthy eating plan that I'm chasing right now? What am I what am I trying to live right now? I have to write it down. Otherwise, later on, I will go and try to change that or say that's not actually what I meant. 
So maybe you're going to be more successful with your resolutions if you look at, at it through the lens of positivity. And so often New Year's resolutions or goals for the year are based on a negative. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm not going to eat snacks anymore. And we focus in on the, the thing that we have to cut out or the thing that we enjoy that we have to stop doing. So if we spin that to a positive, might have a lot better results with that. So maybe it's rather than thinking, I can't eat out anymore. You know, I just can't control myself when I go to eat out. Um, you, you would choose to look at it positively. I'm going to save X amount of dollars by eating delicious homemade meals now. Mm-hmm. Right. So try to look at the positive. What is the positive aspect of what it is that you're trying to do? Okay. And another, focus on that. Another example of viewing your resolutions through a positive light is rather than I have to get up early when I'm super exhausted to go to the gym every day. So rather than that, you're going to think I get to enjoy the sunrise every morning and I'm going to be healthy too. It's a win-win. So it's all about how you look at things. Now, our daughter, um, one of our daughters came to me and um, she wanted to try to eat healthier and to, to be healthier. And she said, Mom, will you help me with this? And I was like, absolutely. Let's do it together. You know, we're going to be healthy together. And um, so we were kind of talking about the things, the habits we wanted to change, things we wanted to stop eating, replacing them with some healthy items and whatnot. And she said this to me, and I was like very impressed. She said, we've got to stop saying I can't and start saying I don't. So rather than saying, I can't have a Diet Coke today, we'll say, I don't have Diet Coke. And I thought that was so great because it, it's rather than, you know, you're not saying that I, I can't do these things and that's very negative and discouraging, but saying, I don't do that. I just don't do that anymore. So I thought that was a great idea. Maybe that's something that can help you paint your, um, your can'ts into positive things. Um, another idea to help you keep your resolution is to create smaller achievable goals that will help. So one of the things we often do is we look at the year as a whole Mm. and we look at things like, and we're talking about cutting some things out and, and changing so we can be healthier. And we're looking at the fact that for a year, I'm not going to. And I think if we take and we break that down, we'll be a lot more successful. So rather than saying for a year, I'm not going to fill in the blank. What if we, what if we broke it down into categories? Like for the month of January, I'm not going to have any soda. And then what happens is if we fail and make mistakes, if we can kind of break this up in, we fail and make mistakes, we're start, we can start fresh again in February. Yeah. Instead of saying, well, I've, I've already lost it, and you know, this year's over. Well, no, make a new fresh start every single month and also use that as kind of a, a measuring. How, far, how, how much did I accomplish this month? What is it, what's the positive things that have taken place? What have I kept? Um, also, things like like what you talked about, um, wanting to write a book um, this year, maybe two books. So in order to accomplish that, we want to break that up into smaller goals. And, and so we can get to the end of January and say, all right, you want to write two books this year, and average, average book you're going to write has... Uh, what, 10 chapters, maybe an introduction and a conclusion. That means if over 12 months I need to have basically 24 chapters written, I need to have two a month done. So at the end of January, I can look and I can say, all right, did I get my two chapters written? End of February, do I have four done? Mm -hmm. And you're able to break that up. Or like the, the, the change I'm trying to make, and and emphasizing the start of my day, focusing in on God and grabbing, grabbing and looking at the Bible first versus social media or something else. Um, I'm able to say, Hey, at the end of January, 
this is how many days I grabbed my Bible first. This is how many days I looked at social media first. This is how many days I played that mobile game first. And I'm able to kind of break it up and then, all right, next month, I'm going to take another step to be more faithful. So breaking it up into smaller achievable goals, um, I think will go a long way in helping us be successful for the entire year. Right. And then you can celebrate the successes as well. Because when you have successfully gone through the month of January with reading your Bible first, you can celebrate that. Yeah. And so like I'm, I want to drop 15 pounds this year. Um, I, that's so achievable when you break it down. Like I just need to lose what a, a pound and a half or less every month. Like you can do that. Mm -hmm. And that's it's about right. making some small little sacrifices. So I get to the end of the month and I've already, I've already lost two pounds. Like I'm ahead on where I want to be by the time the year's over. That's right. And you, and you can, can celebrate. You can celebrate that, but don't celebrate it with cake. <laughs> <laughs> then you're setting yourself back. So you got to be careful with what you celebrate. Don't celebrate the fact that you didn't smoke a cigarette for two weeks by smoking a cigarette. Yeah. That doesn't work. Um, another way that you can keep a positive spin on your New Year's resolutions is what if you combined the thing that you're trying to do with something you already enjoy? Um, I do this in my life a lot. Uh, like if you're trying to do better about keeping up with your dishes in your kitchen, keeping your kitchen clean, then what you do is you listen to your favorite music while you're cleaning the kitchen. This, okay. I've done this my whole li long life. I mean, my whole adult life. This is, this is how I operate my life anyway. But, um, while folding laundry, watch your favorite TV show. Where do I fold all the laundry? On the bed. I always fold my laundry on the bed. We have a TV in our bedroom. Some of you judge us for that. That's okay. We still love you. Um, but I will watch TV while I fold my laundry. And I usually sit on my heating pad <laughs> while yes, I'm folding my laundry. Um, or I have it on my lap or something. And it's so nice. And so I actually look forward to the folding laundry. Like I can't, when there's a load of laundry to fold, I'm like, ooh, yay. I get to go watch my TV show and have my heating pad with me because I'm not normally just going to go sit and right. watch TV with my heating pad. Yeah. But if I'm folding laundry, I will. Well, and one of the things with that is you then start to associate that new thing with things that you enjoy and it changes the way that you feel about it, changes yep. the way that you think about it. Mm -hmm. For me, it's having a TV show in the background while I do tedious computer work. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't have to think this through. This is just tedious things that I have to get done. And so I put on, put on something that I enjoy that helps the time to pass while I'm doing this thing. I'll listen to audiobooks while weightlifting. You know, anything that you can do to make your new habit more enjoyable will help you keep it. And I remember um, four or five years ago when I decided I really wanted to just learn more and read more books because uh, I'm, I don't just enjoy sitting down and reading, but Hey, I want to learn. I want to grow as a father, as a husband, as a leader, as a pastor. That was one of the goals that I had. So how am I going to do that? I'm not just going to sit down and read a book for the most part. Um, but they have this book on, on audible. I, I enjoy going and lifting weights. So combine the two. Or going for a walk, you know, you want to be, you want to be healthier, go for a walk and listen to an audible, audible audio book mm -hmm. or a podcast. I know a lot of you listen to our family meeting podcast while you're running. We want to say, keep going. You're doing great. Don't trip. Don't trip. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so, you know, kind of stacking some of these things and, and it changes the way that you think and feel about something that you don't necessarily enjoy or that you don't like, but you know, it's good for you and it helps you accomplish what you want to accomplish by, by pairing that with things that you do enjoy. Yep. You're going to be a lot more successful. Mm -hmm. And if you're having trouble keeping your new year's resolutions, you may need to create a schedule to help you accomplish that task or goal each day. Look at your calendar. Find an open spot each day. It might mean getting up an hour or hour and a half earlier to find time to work out each day. Maybe it means skipping that last hour of TV you watch at night to get the workout in. Whatever you need to do, do it and get it on your calendar. Because if you don't put it on your schedule, most likely it's not going to happen. 
Yeah, and some of us aren't aren't really schedulers. Mm. Tell me about that. So we might need to get some help to schedule it. <clears throat> Are you asking me to help schedule your future goals? No, I'm not. But okay. I'm just saying that that might be an idea for some of you that just you're not schedulers. Yeah. Thomas is not the schedule in our, in, in our home. That's kind of my thing. That's what I do. And um, so, yeah, you, you've never lived well. And you've tried different apps and everything to try to, like, schedule your life out. But yeah, it's kind of just not who you are. I had one app that I was using. I won't, I won't tell you what app it is. But um, where you, I literally sat down and programmed, tried to program and schedule things to happen. And it would it would send you basically a notification every time you were supposed to do something, whether it was work related, home related, read the Bible exercise. But what would happen is I would skip a day and so the notifications would start to stack up. Oh, and then I just, w I wouldn't open the app. I'm like, Nope. Yeah. I ain't doing it's that. It's too discouraging. It was too much work. Mm -hmm. Right. Too, yeah. Too much work to keep up with it all. Yeah. Right. So you have to find what works for you. That's right. Um, but you're thinking about and talking about scheduling your resolutions. Consider the idea of stacking your habits. And this is a great way to be consistent in keeping your goals, especially the ones while you're adding in a new habit. For instance, and, and this is not going to be me because I don't drink coffee, but I'm giving you the example. <laughs> okay. After you make your morning coffee, I'll read my Bible. Now, for some of you, you might need to switch that. Some of you coffee lovers might need to say, Hey, I'm going to read my Bible and I'm not going to have my cup of coffee until I do. Mm -hmm. uh, and that will help you to keep your resolution. If you know, like, like one of the things that you've talked about in the past, as far as this is the thing that really got you to where you were consistent. And now you never miss a day of reading your Bible is you decided I'm not going to eat until I read my Bible. Yep, every day. I don't eat unless I read my Bible. Going to spiritually feed myself before I physically feed myself. And that was what changed it for you. Yeah. Bec and unfortunately, the reason is that food has huge control in my life. And I knew that if I put my Bible before my food, <laughs> then I would definitely read my Bible because I wanted to eat. So for some of you, it might be... Might be the coffee. Might be the coffee. Yeah. Uh, but, but for some of you, it might be making... Okay, I'm going to make the coffee. And I usually sit down and enjoy that and scroll social media or whatever else. I'm going to enjoy my coffee and read my Bible and have my devotions. The coffee's already a habit. So then what you're going to do is just add the new habit and pair it along with that, however you want to pair it along. Maybe it's after I brush my teeth, I will wipe down the counter and mirror. You no. will? No. I said maybe. <laughs> um, after I get into bed. I will read for 20 minutes. Um, you know, after my morning bathroom routine, I will run. Or maybe if you run before your morning bathroom routine, you'll run faster. <laughs> burn a few more calories. So yeah. all of our runners out there. Yeah, they're like, great, no, bathroom great, routine first. Trust great, me. Great way to do it. <laughs> That's right. And it does seem to be a little easier to maintain a habit by placing it after the habit that already exists. So um, rather than before the habit that already exists, if you try to place it before the existing habit, it may be more difficult for you to keep, um, but you need to figure that out for yourself. So you could try these things both directions. You could say, all right, I'm going to try to read my Bible before I hop in the shower every morning. Uh, that might work for you, but it might be better for you to say right after my shower, that's when I read my Bible. Um, you know, a, a lot of times it's just about what what works in your life because everybody's life is different. Everybody operates different. We're wired differently. So try these things out and see which is better and more beneficial for you. And you may need to th rethink your resolutions. Maybe they were too impossible for you to achieve. So Lysandra talked about wanting to write two books. Does she have the ability to do that? Absolutely. Um, does all do all of her responsibilities and things um, make that difficult to accomplish sure and maybe that is too big of a goal i'm not saying i'm not saying i'm not telling you right now that's too big of a goal okay i'm using that as an example got it um it's okay to go back to the drawing board and and we've talked about kind of breaking it up um specifically with with the writing 
goal that you've talked about, if we get to June and you, you've done everything that you can do and you've only got six chapters done and you've still got 18 more to go to get two books done, it might be time to figure out, okay, is this unachievable? Did I make, did I shoot too high? Yeah. Or am I just not making the right sacrifices? You know, am I watching too much TV? Am I spending too much time on this particular hobby that's not helping me achieve my goals? Um, but that's that's one of the great things about breaking it up into smaller smaller goals that can be marked at different at the month's end or beginning is you have this opportunity built in to evaluate. And to decide, um, maybe you said, and some of you did this, I'm not going to eat another treat for 2022. And you did that. And then here you were three days later eating social peanut butter balls. (laughs) Mm. Okay. That might've been an unreasonable goal. Now, I don't think it was unreasonable to say for the next five days, (laughs) I'm not going to eat treats, but maybe it is. You may need to rewrite it to something more achievable. You may want that goal to be like, in 2023, I will only eat two treats a week. Hmm. Or like, um, I'm reading this book right now that was suggested by a friend of mine, Dusty, um, called The 4-Hour Body. And he talks about the the eating plan that he's he has for his life he's been doing this for like seven years well at the point he wrote wrote the book it's been many years now he had one cheat day a week one day a week where he could just eat whatever he wanted to so maybe that's more of an achievable thing than hey i'm i'm done Mm -hmm. with chips for the whole year now if chips are really your thing then that might be that might not be doable Mm -hmm. And then what happens because you've set this unreasonable goal and you fail, you just give up at everything else. So maybe it's, Hey, six days a week, no chips, but Friday, that's our family day. That's the day I'm just going to enjoy life. That's, that's reasonable. Okay. And we did a podcast episode on smart goals and helping your children set goals. And it may be helpful to you if this is an area you find challenging. So you can find more information on goal setting in episode 94 of our family meeting podcast. Um, Something to keep in mind too, though, you might give up, give yourself grace. Okay. You need to forgive yourself if you fall off the wagon and try again. Don't throw in the towel just because you failed once. All right. Or even failed twice. Mm -hmm. Bible talks about the fact that a just man falls seven times and gets up again. Mm -hmm. So the people who are successful, it's not that they never fail. Right. It's not that they never trip up or make mistakes. It's that when they do, they get back up. Mm -hmm. So you are sitting down with your friends and those peanut butter balls are calling and socially you (laughs) justify it. Well, don't just... Don't just throw in the towel. Oh, I'm done. I'm done. I blew it. I'm, I'm going to eat peanut butter balls for 2023 yeah. all year long. It's <laughs> the end of 2022 and I already blew my 2023 goal. Oh, well. <laughs> no. I'm going to be huge by the end of 2023. You I'll just, tell you that right you now. You just, you get back up. You start over. Mm-hmm. And every morning is a fresh day and it starts new. And I, I think about, um, what, what was it? I think Jeremiah said. And talk about the fact that God's mercies are new for us every morning. I'm so thankful for that. every day is a chance to start fresh. And you don't even have to wait till the end of the month. You might say, well, it's January 11th, so February 1st, that's what I'm waiting for. No, today is a new day. Yes. Today is a fresh start. So when you fall, when you fail, when you screw up, man, I, I smoked today, so I guess it's over. No. It's a fresh day, start new, get back up, and get back going. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the best ways to stay on track with something new or challenging is to find an accountability buddy. <laughs> what? That sounds better than accountability partner. Accountability buddy? Yeah. That's hilarious. 
hilarious. I like that. I don't, okay. I don't know where I heard it. I heard you it heard somewhere. You heard it somewhere? Yeah. Oh, I thought you made it up just right now. No, I'm not that good. Okay. I can't take credit for that. I don't remember where I heard it. I'm surprised. So if it was somewhere not good, I don't, I don't know. Oh, no. Great. I just don't know where I heard it. I'm just saying. Accountability, buddy. But you like that, don't you? <laughs> She's over here cracking up. Okay. Say it. <clears throat> Accountability, buddy. <clears throat> That's but really cute. You live with people who would be perfect for this, your family. Now, maybe that's not the person. So, fellas, if your wife has made a goal or a resolution to lose weight or whatever, you, you want to be very careful about how you're going to hold her accountable for Tread that. Tread lightly, gentlemen. Uh, I would suggest starting a podcast... And then you can just talk about her eating peanut butter balls on the podcast. And then it doesn't feel like a direct attack on her. It's just we're talking this. We're, I feel we're giving, completely attacked. We're giving examples. Yeah. You're lucky I'm so easygoing and lighthearted. Yeah. But uh, maybe maybe your spouse is a good accountability buddy <laughs> that you can have. <laughs> I want to say that just as much as possible to hear you giggle. I'm trying not to giggle. Um, but you and your wife can talk in the evening about, hey, did you stay on track with your eating? How did your exercise do? Well, and it's like me with trying to lose a few pounds. Um, when I told Lysandra this morning that I lo- I'm, d- I'm down two pounds, you know, she got excited about that, gave me a high five. Like there's just something about having somebody along to help you out. And there are a lot of studies out there that if you if you have this support person or support people around you you are more likely to keep your goals and resolutions Mm -hmm. so for all of our podcast listeners out there you know you see lissandra around (laughs) please don't do this i know he's don't do it no i'm just saying ask her how the book's going like oh the book i thought you were gonna say like (laughs) ask her ask her if she ate any peanut butter balls lately (laughs) yeah i'm like don't ask me that i don't have to lie to your face no, but ask oh, her how kidding. ask her how the books go. In fact, yeah. you had somebody text you. One of your friends texted you just yesterday while you were writing, asking how how it's going. Yeah, that was my friend Shelly. Um, and so yeah. it's it's kind of one of those things where if people know about what you're trying to accomplish, they can they can hold you accountable, and that's that's one of those motivators is knowing, man, I've got people that I'm going to answer to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and the accountability partner can pray for you, which is awesome too. Um, Thomas and I will often talk about this kind of support thing with one and one another. Um, we aren't necessarily one another's accountability partner, I would say, but, um, we definitely support one another in each other's goals. We'll say things like, Oh, I saw you ate only meat and vegetables at the party. Great job. Like yeah. if I know that Thomas is trying to cut carbs and I see him eat healthy, I'm going to say something later on and be like, way to go. And I'm going to give him that high five or whatever. Or, wow, you've worked out five of the seven days. That's awesome. I'm proud of you. You know how beautiful it is for somebody to say, I'm proud of you? It's so awesome. Um, You can say that to your accountability partner. We share one another's goals and resolutions with each other. And then we notice when the other one does well. And we give verbal affirmations. So this is not me being Thomas's, like, over the shoulder, like, I'm watching every move you make, making sure that you're behaving yourself. That's not what I'm talking about. Um, what I do is I try to look for when he succeeds at the goal or resolution that he's already set and congratulate him and celebrate with him and encourage him. So what if your, what if your spouse fails? What do you do? Should you say anything? Mm. And it, it is a tricky subject. And some of that depends upon your, your personal relationship with each other. Um, and your communication style and all those sorts of things. But if you say, Hey, don't eat that cake. You said you weren't eating cake until 2024. I don't <laughs> care if it's your brother's birthday. You're not having cake. No cake. That's probably not going to be well received. Mm-mm. They probably won't eat the cake and then they'll also be mad. So they'll be bad for two reasons. Or they'll eat a lot of cake and stare you down in the eyes while they're eating a bunch of cake. That Ma- sounds nice. Eye contact while eating cake in anger. Yeah. That's kind of my style. That is definitely your style. <laughs> <laughs> so, but that's probably not going to be well received. And one of the things we say often is communication is king. 
And my advice is to talk about what kind of help they want before you're in that situation. Mm -hmm. So you may ask a question like, I know you want help staying on your eating plan. How do you want me to help you if you fall off? You know, you, you do binge eat the peanut butter balls. And I just love that I'm like walk, a constant walk example. down the stairs and there's chocolate all over your face and you're laying on the couch just sobbing. <laughs> Do you want me to say something <laughs> or just pray for you and be allow your spouse to be the one who gets to say how you help them? Maybe they say, just leave me alone and be quiet. Just walk away. <laughs> Back up the stairs. <laughs> That's when you leave them alone. and Be quiet, but also pray for them. Mm -hmm. and and ask God to help them. Yeah. Thomas usually just laughs at me, as you can tell. Um, and, and that's like, see, that's, that's our relationship, though. Um, I've had people say things to me like, I can't believe you let him say that to you, or <laughs> things like that. But we have a relationship where we have done lots and lots of communication, and Thomas knows where the lines are. And he, he is very, very careful to stay in the lines. And so we don't really have problems with him like hurting my feelings over things like this. But I remember when we were younger. And do you remember when we were younger? It was a long time ago. Yeah. Um, and I thought I wanted him to help me by saying something. Turns out I didn't. No, she did not. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would be like, okay, honey. I just, I'm trying really hard not to eat junk food. If, if you see me eating junk food, I just want you to remind me of the fact that I don't want to eat junk food. And then I would be like all geared up and ready to eat this cookie. And he's like, you said you didn't want to eat cookies. And I'd be like, I hate you. I love cookies. <laughs> you, think you, know, you think you I'm fat. You don't love fine. me. Yeah. Um, it didn't go well. So uh, no, it did not. I, I would like literally get mad at him for asking um, when, when I asked him to do the, he would do the thing that I asked him to do, and I would get mad. Don't eat, don't, don't let me eat any chocolate. What a fool I was. Yeah. Then now, I, I was darned if I did, and I'm darned if I didn't. Exactly. Exactly. And, um, I, I, you know, I've realized now, through making the mistakes that we made, I don't want him to tell me no. I don't want him to shame me if I fail. Um, all I'm looking for out of Thomas in a support partner is for him not to sabotage me. So like when I tell you, and this, you know, this happened recently. Oh boy, here, here we go. Here we go is right. You better gear up, buddy. Because recently I said, I don't want to eat junk food. I'm, I'm not going to be eating ice cream and stuff like that. Then why and did you have the Ferrara Shays? Stop it. You, you did two things. That was You bought my favorite kind of ice cream, cookies and cream. Not for you though. Yeah, but you bought my favorite kind of ice cream. Well, it's it's not like it's not like everyone in the house hates cookies and cream ice cream. We enjoy it. You brought a bowl to my bed. No, I didn't. And yeah, you did. And then you also bought me a whole box of Ferrero Rochers, which I can't really say that name. Did I say that right? Ferrero. No. R we always the For, girls and I say always it say it wrong. Ferrero. Rocher. We say like Ferraris. But anyway, um, and I ate. A lot of those. But then I did share them with the girls, not you. You did not share them with me. You didn't deserve it. You were sabotaging me. So the only thing I really ask Thomas is don't sabotage me. Like support me if I'm trying to be healthy and stuff. And now just in Thomas's defense, at that point I had already gone off the wagon on peanut butter balls. So it was kind of like I wasn't doing great at that point anyway. But but you had a new day to start fresh. How are you doing? I'm doing really great now. This week I've been amazing. Yeah. Very pleased. But just support your spouse the best you can. You might not always do the right thing. Um, and if you don't, apologize. Is there something you want to say And don't do that me? again. Is there something you want to say to me? I'm sorry. For? Say this conversation? <laughs> there are ways you can support your spouse's efforts. Talk it out. And then do whatever you can to help them be their support system. Now, in the instance where you've told them a way to help you, and then later on you figure out, okay, that's really not what I need to help me. You need to own that for yourself as well. Yeah. And apologize. You know what? I thought I wanted you to say something. I, I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm sorry for that. Um, if your goal is to work out every day or more often, you can find a workout buddy and this will help you so much. I never did so well at being consistent of working out than when we lived in Iowa 
and my sister and I would work out every morning. I also had Heather that I would work out with every morning and I was so consistent. Like I was working out six days a week for years because of that. And it was fantastic. And I felt that I felt good and strong. Um, so I really recommend having some, some sort of workout partner. And I tried this with one of my daughters and we were going to be each other's workout buddy, but it turns out for me, it didn't work because I'm mom. So I also have the ability to veto anything. Yeah. And I would just be like, uh, we're not going to work out tomorrow because it's going to be a really busy day and I'm feeling a little sore from, you know, the paint job yesterday or whatever. Whereas if it was somebody outside the home, it was like they were going to show up at my house at this time and they got out of their bed and came to me and yeah. put on their tennis shoes. I have to get up and work out. So it kind of, for, at least for me, it needed to be somebody outside the home. That positive peer pressure. Mm-hmm. Right. Um Many of our friends are working towards a goal of 1,000 hours outside in 2023. Yes. And that sounds like a lot. Mm -hmm. Like when you think about it, 1,000 hours sounds like a lot. But when you stop and think about 365 days in a year, unless it's leap year, but I don't think it is, mm -hmm. that's, that's only two or three hours a day. Mm -hmm. um, now, those of you in the northern states, that might be a little harder because you're going to have to get out in this cold weather or like triple up in the summer. <laughs> yeah. But it's it it's like 50 degrees here. I don't want to go outside. It's beautiful here. But it's still cold. Mm. But but you know, that's that is a great goal to have and it's something that has a positive effect in so many ways because just getting outside means you're going to be moving around more, you're going to be exercising, you're going to be soaking up the sun which helps with all kinds of benefits mentally and emotionally and everything mm. else. Um, but when you, when you have your family around, you've got friends around who are supporting you and helping you in this. I mean, it, it, it goes a long way. Yeah. I, I love it because I'm hearing these moms, um, you know, when they get together, these moms are like, Hey, how many hours did you log yesterday? I logged this many hours. It's, it's really awesome. Like, I just love seeing that beautiful, um, that beautiful support system they have. It's really cool. I had a friend who his his goal last year and he he achieved it was um to run a thousand miles in, wow. the, in the year. And so one of the things that he was doing was after every jog he was posting on social media logged this many hours out of a thousand. Mm -hmm. Um I mean this many miles out of a thousand. So he had he literally had all his social media people that were his support system, encouraging yep. him, his accountability buddies. Accountability buddies. Yeah. And then those people could, hey, great job. You're almost there. You only got so many miles to go. And mm -hmm. those days where you don't feel like getting out and running, you, you've got the people around you who are encouraging you and cheering you on. It's very cool. Whatever your New Year's resolution is, it's a start. It's a goal to make your life better, your body healthier, or your family closer. So it's good. And we firmly believe in setting New Year's resolutions and goals throughout the year as well. But there's something about a new start at the beginning of the year. I don't know what it is. It just feels like this is a fresh start. Um, just like introducing a new habit the day after your birthday or maybe a relationship goal the day after your anniversary, there's something about those milestones that are kind of like yeah. a fresh start. It feels like, okay, this year, this week, whatever it is, like how everybody wants to start afresh on a Monday, right? Um, but it is good because I understand that it can be negative where you're like, don't wait till Monday to start. I understand that. But at least start sometime. If that is Monday for you, do it on Monday. But it's really great to set goals and to have resolutions. We firmly believe in it. And um, working towards better and new behaviors is always good. It's always good. Daniel 1.8 says this, but Daniel resolved that he would not defile himself with the king's food, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he asked the chief of the eunuchs to allow him not to defile himself. Daniel made a resolution. He made a decision yeah. that he wasn't going to eat certain foods and drink certain things. And God ended up blessing him for that. And, um, and it is good to make a New Year's resolution. So maybe you're kind of one of those people who's like, I'm not doing that. Everybody makes New Year's resolution and then they just blow it. And what's the point? It's stupid and all this. That's fine if you think that way, but just consider the fact that making a resolution is at least trying. 
yeah. for something good. It's a, it's a, tr it's trying. So, um, encourage your, your friends who are doing resolutions and then consider if maybe this would be something to do for yourself. And if you're against the term resolutions, call it a goal. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Call it a goal. Every one of us should be setting goals in our spiritual life, our physical life, our emotional life. We should be setting goals, mental, mental, financial goals. Um, it's just a way to better yourself, better your life, better your family's um, relationships. It's really important. So make sure that you're setting some sort of resolution or some sort of goal and then doing your best to try to keep it. Well, and it's one of the examples we want to set for our kids is that we're constantly working on ourselves, constantly trying to evolve and become better people uh, who are more equipped. So you know, we, we want, we want that pattern for our kids. We want to show them what it means to set a goal and to, to make the sacrifices and the efforts that it takes to accomplish it and teach them they can accomplish whatever they want in life. They just have to work for it. They mm -hmm. have to put in the time. They've got to make the sacrifices. And it's a great way to show them how to do that. So I encourage you, like she said, maybe you don't like the word resolution. Maybe it's got a bad connotation for you, but you do, you, you should have goals. We all should have goals. So I want you to have a family meeting tonight and just everybody share with the family, the new year's resolutions they set or the goals that you have for 2023. Discuss whether or not your new year's resolutions were reasonable. <laughs> Maybe they're not reasonable. Um, if they're not discuss a new version of that resolution, that's more achievable. And then like we talked about, break it down. What do I, what do I want to accomplish by January? What do I need to accomplish by April? All right. October's rolling around. What needs to be accomplished by then? So that when I come to the end of December, I'm able to accomplish what it is that I set out to accomplish this year. Um, and then just take a moment to encourage your family on their goals. Mm -hmm. Thanks for joining us today. Please go and subscribe to the Family Meeting Podcast from your favorite podcast provider. And if you found this information to be helpful, please share this episode on your social media and invite your friends and family to listen in with you. To find more content and information Lysandra and I provide, you can go to our website, familymeeting.org, or send us an email, info at familymeeting.org, text or call us at 904-257-3062. And we want to invite you to join us for our next family meeting. We're going to talk about another episode suggested by a listener. Knowing your worth in Jesus and understanding that your value is in him, not your spouse or your family relationships. Yeah, and I really like that. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, in our marriage book, we're going to talk a little bit about that as well. Um, but that'll be, a, that'll be a good conversation to kind of keep, get us focused especially at the beginning of the year, talking about some of these relationship goals that you have. Um, you, you get it focused in the right direction first. It'll make those things a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Thanks for joining us today for this family meeting. Have a great week, everybody. This meeting is adjourned. I had a goal of finishing this episode. Congratulations. Let's celebrate. Accomplished it. Cake? Let them eat cake. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on YouTube today. I hope that your day goes really, really well. Hopefully you accomplish some of your goals and some of your resolutions. Maybe it's time to rewrite them and go back to the drawing board. But whatever you do, do something and uh, go toward your goals. Go towards your resolutions. See how you do. And learn from my wife's failures. Don't, don't eat the ice cream. Don't have the Ferrara Rochers. Don't eat the peanut butter balls. Just, just put them down. Put them down. Have a little bit of self-control, for goodness sakes. And learn from my husband about what not to do. Shame your spouse publicly. I have no shaming. I feel shamed. No, it's just a, an example. Our lives are an open book so that we can share with people and help them grow. Yeah, I'm going to open your book. I don't even know what really? that means. <laughs> that like, was supposed to mean like I like the you. sound of, oh. I don't know. The end. All right. Have a great week, everybody. <laughs>